In open web railway girders, a problem is typically encountered where a gap gets created between top plate of bearing and gusset plate of bottom lateral bracing. In this video, we will understand the problem and its solution with the help of diagrams, photos, and an animated video. In open web girders, this problem typically occurs. Let's first understand the arrangement on L0 that is the first joint of any RDSO standard open web girder. Below the section of bottom cord, there is a thin gusset plate which connects bottom lateral bracing. Below this gusset plate, top plate of bearing is there. The thickness of this gusset plate is quiet less, generally 10 to 12 millimeters. Many a times this gusset plate bends upwards and a gap is visible between this gusset plate and bearing top plate. Let's understand the real reason behind the problem. The typical bottom cord section of any RDSO standard open web girder is made of two channel sections. These channel sections are built up sections and flanges of these C sections are a small distance away from the edge in order to accommodate the fillet welds. In order to increase the stiffness of this joint, a diaphragm plate is provided. This diaphragm plate is fixed inside the bottom cord section at L0 with the help of cleat angles and bolts. The bottom edges of the bottom cord section rests on the bottom lateral bracing gusset plate. The gap between flanges of C section and gusset plate is filled by packing plates. The assumed load distribution from bottom cord to the gusset plate is uniformly distributed load, but in reality it acts as a line load as shown in this figure. That means that line load from the webs of the bottom cord C sections directly gets transferred to gusset plate. As a result, bending of this gusset plate in upward direction takes place. This is further supported by distortion of bottom cord built up section because it does not offer sufficient stiffness. If we increase the stiffness of bottom cord section, it will resist the upward bending of this gusset plate. In order to solve this problem, three modifications have been done in the RDSO drawings. Number one modification is that in old arrangement, the top and bottom of diaphragm plate did not touch the flange corners. In the modified arrangement, it touches the flange corners, thus offering a better resistance to distortion. Also, please note that corners of the diaphragm plate have been cut to accommodate fillet welds at C-section's corners. Second modification is that two triangular ribs have been welded on both sides of the diaphragm plate. This triangular rib has two straight edges. One is welded with diaphragm plate, while other just sits on the packing plate. It is not welded with packing plate. It offers direct resistance to its upward bending. Third modification is that instead of providing packing plate in two parts, a continuous single packing plate has been provided. All these modifications have resulted into providing sufficient stiffness at L0 location of the bottom cord. This arrangement stops the bending of gusset plate. All RDSO standard drawings of 25-ton open web girders have been altered and suitable stiffening arrangement have been provided. In longer spans, girders more than one diaphragm plate has been provided. The field officials who are going to adopt any new design that is non-standard open web girder design may keep this in mind to have suitable stiffness ensured at L0 locations in such girders. These modifications can be incorporated not only in new constructions, but also in existing girders. In existing girders, the old diaphragm plate shall be removed by opening the bolts of cleat angles. The newly fabricated diaphragm plate will be installed with the help of same or new cleat angles and bolts. Watch this small video to know how it can be done. So in this video, you can clearly see the arrangement at L0 support. This is the built-up section of bottom cord made of 2C section. The green color is shown to represent the older arrangement of cleat angle and diaphragm plate. So this plate being shown in green is basically old arrangement, which we will remove. So once we fully remove the old diaphragm plate and supporting cleat angles with bolts, now we can fix our new modified diaphragm plate with the help of cleat angles and bolts again. For this purpose, we will fabricate the new diaphragm plate as per our DSO drawings and bring them to site for fixing.
You can also clearly see the ribs which have two straight edges. One is welded with diaphragm plate and other is simply supporting on the packing plate, which will arrest the upward bending of gusset plate. The fixing arrangement is same. That is, with the help of cleat angles and bolts. RDSO drawings have been modified in such a way that the same set of cleat angles and bolts can be reused. So as shown in this animation video, this system can be used in existing girders as shown here. I hope this is quite clear now. If you want a special topic to be covered, please mention the same in comment section. Subscribe for more such content.